This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is the Wacom Cintiq Pro 16 Gen 2, or the late 2021 model. It's not a huge change from the previous generation's Wacom Cintiq 16 Pro that we reviewed. Well, it came out around 2017 or so, but the changes they've made are thoughtful ones here. We're going to look at it now. Since not that much has changed, this won't be the world's longest review. We're going to talk what, about what's different, really. But first, what's the same? The core features of a Wacom Cintiq Pro model. Well, the 16 inches is smaller. They also make a 24 inch size and it has support for touch and of course Wacom's Pro Pen 2 with 8192 pressure levels and tilt and if you like rotation besides barrel rotation for the pen you can get a rotation pen for this. It's a 4K display UHD though it's wide gamut in fact the gamut's gotten a little wider and it's gotten significantly brighter honestly it measures almost 400 nits which for a pen display is unusually bright and if you're looking at the less expensive competitors from Huey on an XP pen that's one thing that's going to set it apart right there. And lastly, for those of you who are just like new to the concept altogether, a pen display is one that you can draw on. There you have it. And Wacom's Pro line of Cintiqs are the best that they have in terms of color gamut, in terms of pen accuracy, and in terms of resolution. There's a regular Cintiq 16 that I reviewed, and that one is a full HD resolution, not as fancy pants of display, but it's considerably more affordable for those of you who are hobbyists and really don't want to make the big spend. What the pros use is typically Cintiq Pros out of all the possible products that are out there, but there are a lot of self-employed artists, all that sort of thing, who do shop around for different price points. And I'll talk about the competition a little bit later. All right, so this is compatible with Mac and Windows. Obviously, we have it hooked up to a Windows machine. This is a Surface Laptop Studio. I've also used it with the 16-inch M1 MacBook Pro Max model. So drivers are available for both of these. So what's new compared to the older Cintiq? Well, first off, now you have a Visa mount on the back, so you can use either Wacom's stand, which we are using at the moment, adjustable height stand, because this doesn't come with a stand other than the usual two pop-out 20 degree of lift legs, and you've got express keys on the back. And while I say that most of what Wacom's done is very thoughtful, I, I have a love-hate relationship with the express keys on the back, because they're right up here. And since this is a 16 inch device, you might actually be using this on your lap and it's where you tend to grab it. So I was accidentally activating express keys like crazy. Now you can disable them and they have updated the driver. So now when you press a key, it'll show you on screen first and you touch to confirm what you wanted to do. So you don't have that problem anymore. Of it just immediately toggles display function or something like that. So some of you might love it and some of you might love it less like me, but I've learned to make use of it. And of course you can program the express keys to do a variety of things, whatever you want to do. They are convenient things to have. Speaking of express keys, you can also use the optional express key remote, which is a handheld device charges over USB. And that's something that's very convenient because you can just hold it in your hand separate from, well, the display whatsoever. The next thing they've added are display cable connections up top. Yes, tidy looking it's not, but believe me, if you've used a Cintiq or any pen display, you know this is convenient because they don't get in your way. Uh, not sticking out of either side, not trying to run them out at the bottom, which is mm, a recipe for disaster. And these are normal cables, no proprietary cables anymore. So that means if your cable breaks, you just go get another one, easy peasy. You don't need a specialty cable. Speaking of cables, we have USB-C for a single cable connection. And if you don't have a laptop that supports USB-C with display out functionality, you also get an HDMI and a USB-C to USB-A cable in the box. So you can go for the older style connection as well. So that's much better. So you see what I mean? A lot of creature comforts, a lot of things that people would have liked to have seen, but the core functionality of the device and the display quality haven't changed that much. And the pen technology is the same, Pro Pen 2 with the same amount of pressure levels and tilt and all that sort of thing. So this isn't going to make you go out and buy a Cintiq Pro 16 if you already had the previous generation one, but for those of you who haven't bought one yet, it brings some things to the table that people would have liked to have seen. Also new is an actual slider switch to enable and disable touch. You know, instead of having to fiddle with menus and on-screen stuff and all that, you're just drawing and you're noticing the palm rejection ain't what you need right now, you can just disable touch and then turn it back on when you're ready for it. Speaking of palm rejection, uh, great on Windows. It was quite good. Once in a while I have a little problem. I do usually wear an art glove also to help, but on, on the Mac, touch rejection not nearly as good. And that means it's detecting my palm touching the screen while I'm using the pen. 
And well, lastly, we are talking a Cintiq Pro here and they do have fans inside. And the higher you set the brightness, the more likely you are to hear the fan. We're running at 100% brightness right now. So like I said, about 400 nits and I can hear the fan. Compared to the Cintiq Pro 24 and some previous generation Cintiqs, I would say it's gotten a little bit better. But if you like to run this at high brightness, you will hear some fan noise. It's not like a gaming laptop level whirring and wishing, but you know, it's there. Well, the display quality, other than the brightness, really haven't changed that much. And it is very good. It is a very wide gamut display and now very bright. One thing that has improved is the touch, where the touch felt a little bit sometimes janky, particularly on the Mac, which doesn't have such great support for touch, does it by any means. It's really good and smooth now. So when I'm painting, I can just pinch in, pinch out, and that's fine. And you can do rotation, two fingers. It might be easier with two hands, depending on you, but it's fine. In terms of driver stability, pen displays are notorious for being a little bit problematic, but usually I've found that Wacom are the least problematic. It's been very good under Windows, and I'm even running it with Windows 11 just to make things a little more challenging here. Now on the Mac with M1 Max and Photoshop, which I find Photoshop for M1 is a bit of a work in progress as it is in terms of stability and strange things, it was a little bit more crashy when I was painting digitally, but you know, Again, Photoshop on the M1 Mac, already a little mm, dicey. And I was running in a triple monitor setup too with a 4K display connected to the Mac's internal monitor plus this one. So that's shooting for a lot of challenges there. Now, in terms of overall, how is this product? You know, it's been four years since it came out basically. We've got the refresh conveniences and things like that. It's still, for pen monitors, the best experience. I mean, there's just nothing like it when you use it. Yes, it costs a lot more than some of the competition, but for the, the responsiveness of drawing, the paper-like feel, the fact that you have interchangeable nibs, like I like the felt tip nibs, no problem. Competitors don't give you different kinds of nibs. Uh, absolute lack of diagonal line jitter. It's just as close as you can get to a natural media experience while using a digital device. And that's still what sets it apart. The competitors like XP Pen and Huion have come a long way. And they even up the ante and starting to do 4K displays when we reviewed some of those. But this still gets the for you know professional level work. If if you have the money for that, there's a reason why a lot of professional studios are still buying these. That said, for those of you who are on a budget, you're thinking about it, there is Wacom Cintiq 16. Same great drawing experience, just full HD instead of 4K. Not quite as nice a display, but a good experience for way less than this. Then there's the XP Pen Artist 6 Pro 16TP. That one's $900, and that one has touch too, which is something we haven't seen from the competitors yet. It's also wide gamut. That one's pretty nice, so there is an alternative there. Use a different kind of similar pen technology, but not quite the same, but it's not bad, but it's $900 instead of this, which is $1,500. Mind you, it won't be as bright as this. Then there's the Huey on Canvas Pro 16 4K Plus, I think it's called. I haven't reviewed that one yet. That one's $830. That one's only 200 nits of brightness and does not have touch though, so you're losing that for the spend that you're giving, but also pretty good in terms of display quality and in terms of the pen quality. So there are competitors out there, but still kind of hard to beat the Wacom for the actual art experience. And of course, photo retouching and all those other things too. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos, including tech for artists.